Okay, we're going to set up a couple of things now. We're going to set up uh, Samba, which allows Windows hosts to connect to your NAS. Uh, so if we take a, a window from my Windows machine here and have a look at this, this storage thing here, this is connected to my, um, my NAS and this is connected from Windows to Linux using Samba. So it's, it's a quite a useful one to set up because it will work from Mac as well. Um, the other thing we're going to set up is um, NFS in a moment. This is very useful for Kodi and also for other Linux hosts as well. So let's first of all, let's do Samba. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste. I don't need to type. So let's do this. It's going to install some stuff. Yeah, that's what we want. Now, whilst that's running in the background, let's take a look at the configuration file. Again, on GitHub, there's a copy of the my um, smb.com file. You can see it's basically broken down to different sections, the different shares that are available. So how does that look like in the real world? If I show you just the IP address of my server, you can see here I've got home, opt and storage. And those three directories map neatly to the three different shares that are available from Samba. So that's what you need to do. You just need to create the shares. You know, here's the file path that you want to make available. Is it browsable? It's all fairly self-explanatory. But the thing about Samba I found is that the configuration file, if we look at the default um, configuration file, it's just got a whole, I mean, it's catering for everyone, right? I mean, as is its right to do so. But for you know, for my purposes, I'm at home. I'm, I'm not really that bothered about security and stuff like that, as we've talked about. I don't really mind if guests can, you know, browse it and whatever without a password or or any authentication. Um, in fact, I'll, that's probably a good thing at home. Um, so this is the simple version of the Samba comp file. Um, so what you need to do is edit it and then place it into the file path etc smb so oh, sorry samba smb.conf once it's in there you'll restart the samba service with s re system ctl restart smbd and we'll just check the status and it's running marvelous let's move on to nfs now NFS is configured in a file called etc exports. By default, it's got nothing in it. All you want to add are the directories you want to export. There's some various um, options here. The only important one really to worry about for the purposes of this video is the read only. Now this means that Kodi can't go and delete stuff. It can't write metadata sometimes uh, to these directories. I actually want that, you might not. So again, change it so that it fits your your requirements I'm just going to add this in here very quickly just to show you um, let's do this and that and then we need to do a couple of things so let's do export FS minus RA okay it's failed because those directories don't exist fine we know that uh, I don't really care for the purpose of this video you then want to restart the NFS service so if we just use systemctl again to look at the status of nfs hyphen kernel service, kernel server dot service, my apologies, uh, we can see that it's actually, it's active, but it exited. So that's how you view the status of nfs. All right, you now have a NAS. You have files available on network shares over the network. And um, if I can get Windows to do the right thing, um, I'll just do a quick demo of uh, writing some files to the NAS. So here are the video files for this video. I'm just gonna go to storage and then I'll just drop them in the root for now. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. So you can see the performance is pretty good. Okay, they're not the biggest files in the world, but you get the idea. Um, it saturated my gigabit connection just then just fine so uh, over Samba we have plenty of headroom right now we actually start running some applications